because other because I don't want to make you navigate over here. <laughs> And that'll be after the. I have a sunset picture on the slideshow, Jim. So after that, we'll. What happened to you? I. There. Okay. An educational show about smartphones and tablets with geeks on tour. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's going to be fun, I can tell. <laughs> uh, I'm hearing you now. It's an internet connection issue. Okay, I think. we have a, All right, we'll deal with that. Hi, I'm Jim. Together with my wife, Chris, we're at Geeks on Tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? Do you have questions about your How do you learn about these amazing devices? You better well, talk we're slower. we're geeks who <laughs> teach. We're into lifelong learning and helping others learn technology along the way. So if we're going to try and be organized about the show and keep it to a half hour in the beginner's lesson, there's Chris. Look at that. We'll start with something that's important for beginners to know about their phones. And we'll go with iPads and we'll show Androids in this segment. And I'll do an app of the week and a random tip. And we'll take your questions. So if you're on the event page or on the YouTube page, go ahead and put your comments and questions in the down there in the comments. And we'll try to get them on in the live show. We'll also record this show for, and it'll be available on YouTube later on. Chris, say hi. Maybe. Hi, everybody. Oh, you're gone. <laughs> ah, and then we have David Cross. Hello, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Let's get right into it. And we might be having some problems Let's here. Yeah, let's let's do a little bit of a check with people. Interesting. Before you went live, we were hearing each other fine. I'm but hearing does it, maybe live takes up more bandwidth. Just waiting to get a confirmation that people are hearing us. Yeah, Chris, try and get on to a different um, connection. See if you can get on to my connection. It'll drop you for a second, but if you do it, that should work. Okay, on our website, geeksontour.com, you can see several hundred tutorial videos on all the topics that we teach. <laughs> I need to show this. Uh, laugh. Can you see that? It's a beautiful day. Wish you were here. Just look at this view. <laughs> Mom, your finger is covering the lens. Oops, can you see it now? You can't just send the same picture. You'll have to take another one. How about now? <laughs> Looks great, Mom. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I love that one. Yeah. It's also a good example of why you might want to take a screenshot sometime, and we'll, we'll be showing you that later in the show. Well, that's not so good either. But last week, we did classes for the Golden Gate Computer Society. And we had some hands-on classes, and we presented a seminar. So we split it up into iPhones and iPads. That was really a lot of fun. And hands-on classes are just so much the way to do it. And we were in the Sonoma wine country. Look at that. A Corbell champagne cellars. And that picture of Chris, I just love that one. Now we're no driving. Particular. Huh? No particular occasion, just celebrating life. And we are by the 
premier champagne sellers couldn't pass that up. Okay, and now we're driveway camping at an old friend's in Watsonville. Chris went to high school with this woman, and they've been in touch and friends ever since. Verizon's not so good here, so we're using our Wi-Fi Ranger to reach a house Wi-Fi, and that is really cool that we can do that. And we're still experiencing some difficulties, but it seems to be working okay at my end. We Judy are, says we are pushing that, the limit. Yeah, we do that. And we're on generator. We don't have power where we are here, so <laughs> so so it's good. So Jeff says it's hearing us okay in the UK, and uh, Judy says she's look, hearing us fine wherever right, she is. If, and uh, so that's cool. All right. Let, let Aaron say hello. And then I want to show something about her. Okay, let's let's see if I can do that real quick. The best part of driveway camping is getting to spend real quality time with with friends. You know, you're not just visiting them for lunch or dinner. You're living there for three days without having to use their bedroom or bathroom. <laughs> so it's just really cool to get to see my old friend Aaron. Well, say hi, Aaron. Hi, everybody. Yeah, it's great to be here with you. That's just Glad so much it. fun. And it's great to watch this happening live. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little scary, isn't it? <laughs> okay. On with the show. Well, actually, just um, I do want to show. I mean, if any of you watched our. Uh, Am I sharing? There we go. If anybody remembers watching our episode, I think it was the third or fourth episode, where we talked about HDR photography, you may remember a weaving that figured into that session that I said was made by my good friend Erin. Well, she's an artist, and this is her website, ancientcharms.com. She makes the coolest jewelry. She displays them at Renaissance fairs. And here is her Etsy store. Look at those cool things. If so, go to her Etsy store and buy some, okay? <laughs> Great for birthdays and Christmas presents. <laughs> Absolutely, buy some. <laughs> They're beautiful things. And yeah, please, please. <laughs> Support those who give us driveway camping. <laughs> <laughs> that was my wait. And shall we let David say hello? <laughs> he already did. I thought oh, I'm I did sorry. already. I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. Him all again. <laughs> I, I, I never listen to you. <laughs> 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 okay. All right then. So. Chris, are you ready to do your beginner's lesson? I am. I don't Oops. think you are. I don't think I am. That's right. It disconnected. Let me let me try it again. Nothing better than dead air. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna scoot on over here. Okay. And see if I, I think I'm back on. Yeah, it looks oh, like okay. you are. Hopefully. Okay. Nope. Still not seeing me. You were on. I mean, my minute. my You're device. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Change the camera, though. You're looking at the ceiling. There we go. <laughs> okay. I'm not now. So. Today's beginner lesson is about calendars, specifically Google Calendar. And as always, I'm going to start with the with the iPad. And the problem though with the iPad and Google Calendar is there is no Google Calendar app. So let me show you what I mean. 
I want to use Google Calendar. I, and I do not want to use the calendar that comes stock with, with the iPad. That's that one there. Just because, you know, this is an Apple device. My other devices are, are Windows, Macintosh, and Android. The one thing that works with all of them is Google Calendar. So I want to use Google Calendar. But on the App Store, if we search for Google Calendar, you'll see lots of th options come up, but if you look closely, none of them are by Google. So this is Read, Reddle, Appxy, Sunrise, GWiz apps. None of these are Google Calendar, even though they show up on a search for Google Calendar. None of them are Google. So how do I get to Google Calendar on an iPad or iPhone? Well, you just open a web browser on Safari, and I go to, well, <laughs> I'm already there because we did this, and I go to calendar.google.com. And just a second, I want to, we just did some testing. <laughs> I want to delete them first. Okay. So calendar.google.com and go. And it comes up to this mobile version where you can where you can look at day and month and that's just about all you can do with this this screen is certainly big enough that I can use the full desktop version so see that little option down in the bottom desktop so instead of using the condensed mobile version of Google Calendar I tap on desktop and now I'm seeing the full the same experience that I would have on Windows so what do you want to do with a calendar? You want to set appointments. Well, I say, hey, Jim, you need a dentist appointment. <laughs> and we're going to be back in Florida at some point in time. Let's just see how this works. I can tap on day and look at one day. I can tap on week and look at a week. I like month. And sometimes I like agenda, which means don't show me a calendar, just show me the list of what I have coming up. But I'm going to go back to month here and say, let's see, in September, I think we have some time opening up. There's the whole week of the 21st through the 27th is open. Let's book some stuff. So I call the dentist and I say, on the 20th, I'll do the and it says, oh, do you want to schedule something for this date? Yes, I do. I want to schedule a dentist appointment, but I don't even want to schedule it for me. I want to schedule it for Jim. So I'm going to put it on Jim's calendar. Notice it says calendar here. And we're not going to show you in this session how you share calendars. Just you go to Google and read the instructions for that. But whoops, wrong one so easy to tap the wrong thing on these screens. So Jim Gould, but it comes up as seven, you know, without a time. So I'm going to tap on edit event. And when edit event comes up, did you lose? There we go. Edit event comes up. It automatically says all day. No, I don't want it to be all day. What time should a dentist appointment be at, Jim? Uh, dentist appointments are always at 2.30 because if you need to go to the dentist, it's tooth, your, your tooth is hurting, 2.30. <laughs> okay, so we're setting that for 2.30 and I want to make sure that that's, we, we are saying that we will be back in Florida by then though and instead of Pacific time, we will get very messed up if we leave that at 2.30 Pacific time. It will end up being at 5.30 once we are actually there. So I tap on time zone and make this be Eastern time zone. 
and we've written articles about it. And then Jim also for this, so I'm going to add a reminder and make it be a, a pop-up for... Now I'm going to tell it to send them in. Oh, look at that. I didn't even realize that. I can set multiple reminders. We can remind him at two hours and at one hour and at ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll come in handy. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to say at two hours, I'm going to X out that second one I did. And then, last but not least, you have to make sure to save. Okay, next I'm going to schedule myself a hair appointment on the next day. So I tap on 24 and I type haircut. And it's on my calendar, but I want to change some options, so therefore I have to tap on edit event. What did I do? I must have tapped on cancel without meaning to. <clears throat> Haircut, and it is not an all day. I like having my haircut at 11 a.m. And once again, I'm saying this will be when we're back in Florida, so I'm going to make it Eastern time zone. And I've made arrangements with my hair cutter to do this every other month. So I'm going to tap on repeat and look at all the options. It can repeat weekly, daily, every Monday. I'm going to say, well, I want it to do with months, but I want it to repeat every two months. And then it says, okay, well, that's a little weird. Do, I, do you do it for the day of the month or the day of the week? I say the day of the week. And it's saying, okay, that means this will be scheduled every two months on the fourth Wednesday. And I save. <laughs> and I lost my connection. Okay, well, it's time to go over to you now anyway, Jim. <laughs> okay. And what Jim is going to show you is how, since we are sharing calendars, everything I just did is available to him on his phone. But first, he has the same, he has a different issue with Google Calendar. He does have an app for Google Calendar, but he has two apps. You want to explain that, Jim? Well, the one that came with my phone, actually, two came with the phone. One, one is just the calendar that's the regular app, and that's the green one here. And the Samsung calendar app is also available to me. I don't really care for having three different calendars and actually the one that came with my Android phone, the green one there, is quite good. But I also downloaded from the Play Store. So if you go to the Play Store and you look for calendars, you're going to get like 250 different calendars. So you got the Google Calendar and there's a bunch of them down there. Some are good, some are not so good, but try it out. The Google Calendar, the one by Google Inc., is probably the best one for most people. Okay, so I'll go ahead and open that one. And I want to look at the different views. I have day, week, month, and an agenda. So I'm in August. I just scroll up to September. And Chris just put this down the dentist appointment but look I'm a, it says that it's going to be at 1130 on mine because I'm in Pacific time and the reminders did not come over mine is still set to 10 minutes so I should be reminded an hour yeah, and I'm I, not sure why that happens. Does that mean that I'm going to get the reminder for your dentist appointment? I'm, I'm not sure about that. But I'm, I'm not sure either. But, but look, the 23rd is just really not a good day for, for my dentist appointment because I'm going dive in that day. So I'm going to have to change that. <laughs> so I'll click on the edit, and I'll change the date from Tuesday over to Thursday. 
I'll keep the same time. <laughs> the dentist time. The, the dentist time. And then I can change my time settings to whatever time that I need it to be. So it'll be 2.30 Eastern time and done. My All event right. is saved. So now when we look at Chris's setup, it'll change there also. Okay. Now I can look at the same thing and I'll show you. I'll get out of this calendar and go home and look at the calendar that came with the Android and look at all that much more information is displayed at a time there. So I'll move over here. Now notice that Chris's haircut is showing up here on the 24th, but my dentist appointment has changed. And it gives me the two times, Pacific time and Eastern time, and my reminder is an hour before. So that, that stays with my calendars, regardless of which calendar I'm using. All right. Now, didn't I hear you talking to Paradise Island about setting up a class sometime that week, too? Oh, that's right. We were going to have a class, and I think it was going to be on Friday. So all I need to do is touch on Friday there. And I have a choice of the different calendars. I can add events or tasks. The calendars that I have are my calendar, which is Jim. We have a Geeks on Tour. I could add it to Chris's calendar, or I could add it to the Samsung calendar. So, but, so GOT stands for Geeks on Tour. That is our company, our business calendar. Okay, so we both see that, and we can also share that with the public. So tap to enter. And seminar at Paradise Island. Oh, you are so lazy. I am lazy. <laughs> Okay, so it's not an all-day affair, so I'm just going to change the date, the starting time, and it's going to be at 7 p.m., and it'll go for about an hour, and I can even put stickers on there if I want. There's now, all kinds. Yeah. Just just to remind people, he is not using the Google Calendar here. He is using the Android Calendar that came with the device. And I, at least, don't see an easy way to set the time zone on that one. Okay. So, which is one reason why I, I like using the same Google Calendar on everything, just because I'll get used to how it works. But this one does, you know, I agree that I like the more information this one shows. Okay, and make sure it's saved. Then that gets put in there, and notice that it has the little push pin there, which is a way that I can I can categorize my settings. All right, the last thing to show is how this looks on the computer. So I would like to share my screen with them. Okay. All I see is your avatar. I do not see your screen, Chris. Okay. Uh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> is that better now? Uh, not yet. No, I see the screen share, but I don't. I don't see your screen. I just still. There we go. Okay. It's on now. Go ahead. So it, says, so it says Google. So now I am on my computer on a browser, and I tend to use the Chrome browser. And just on the Google page, this little this is like the all apps on your on your uh, mobile devices. All these little squares. I click on that, and I find hmm, I find the calendar. All right. So here is my calendar on 
the computer and notice same thing I can look at just a day I can look at a week I can look at a month or two weeks or I can look at agenda which just shows every appointment I have coming up Ooh, Ryan River Cruise where that one <laughs> that sounds, that sounds good. good let's do that now <laughs> Looks like we've subscribed to uh, some travel <laughs> thing. All right, I'm going to go to month and go to September because I want you to see those appointments on on the computer here. And oops, I went too far. So September month and up. So here is the haircut. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get the screen adjusted just so. There we go. So there is the haircut on the 24th and the dentist appointment on the 25th and the seminar on the 26th. Now, the the time zones are still a problem. So actually and and they are going to continue to be a problem if you like us are always traveling everywhere. So I tend to say the way to make absolutely sure you understand is to put in the title 11 a.m. Eastern. Actually type in Eastern then even if you haven't set everything right you will not be late. You will know when when it is. But the last thing I want to show you is this seminar. Notice the colors. So green means it's my calendar. It shows that over here. Orange means it's the Geeks on Tour calendar. And since we've made that one public, if we go to our Geeks on Tour site and go to calendar and go to September, you will see that appointment that he put on on the calendar and that is that is our overview of Google Calendar okay that sounds great well real quick here Judy has something I'm in Coeur d'Alene at the Elks with light rain for your information. I use Google Calendar in sync with my laptop and Android, Samsung Galaxy smartphone, and the Kindle Fire. And there's a Google link down there. Uh, so that's on our comments page. Check yeah, great. Okay. So useful to have the exact same information on every device. Absolutely. Okay. So it's time for my app of the week. I think I'll do something here. Flickster is going to be my app of the week and it was voted the best at your service app in the Google Play Store. It's a terrific app for learning about what movies are playing in your area and for us RVers we're always in different places so we want to have uh, an idea if movies come out. You can browse the top box office movies and movies that are going to be coming up soon It'll show you the show times in your favorite theater, and if your participate if your theater is participating, you can even buy tickets right there, and you don't have to stand in line. That's really handy. The other thing that I like about it, it has reviews from Rotten Tomatoes. That's a crowd-sourced review. You can watch high-quality trailers right on your device, your iPhone, your iPad or your Android device and they even have an app for the Windows phone which is really cool. You can create your own want to see list and you can see the different let's see let's bring it up here okay so this is where I am there's something new here where you can actually stream and download full-length movies and manage your Netflix queue but Anyway, this is where I am right now, and these are the theaters that are nearby. I can check by name, and I can scroll through. I can see. So if I have a favorite theater, those are all there. And then I can even go to a map of the area, and notice that I am centered on the screen there. And that's where I am. And I'll scroll out a little bit and these are the theaters that are close by and it'll give me more information 
so I can check and see when the what's playing the play times show times this particular one is not available to buy tickets but I can check out the the November man you can put it on a list for want to see you can play the trailer I'm not going to do that right now and movie info all kinds of information who's in it the director and the reviews so this is something that is really really handy if that's what you want to do I love movies okay now that's available for free on the App Store or the Play Store for Google and it is also let's see for the Windows Phone all free and that's my app of the week check it out and Chris I'm ready to review isn't there I think there's some review questions Okay. Oh, or there's questions from the audience, wasn't there? We had one question earlier this week on how do you take a screenshot? And I promised earlier in the show that we'd show you how to do that. So let me come over. I'll show you how on the, on the iPad as well as the Android. All right. So. Okay. That's getting there. Good. So on the iPad, if for some reason I wanted to send you a picture of my calendar, the way you take a shot of the screen on the iDevice is by holding down the power button, the um, you know, the also known as the sleep wake button. That that one where normally if you if you press that, it just turns the screen off. So I'm going to show you how you use it to take a screenshot. And then the home button. So what you have to do is press the power and the home at the same time and then let go. See how it blinks? It just took a picture of the screen. How do you see that picture? You go to your photos and there it is. And now it is just a picture like any other picture. You could share it. You could print it. Um, you can email it to somebody. So that's a great thing for when you have error messages. Take a screenshot and then email that error message to whoever helps you out with your device. And the exact same thing on, on, the, uh, on the Android devices. So home, find something that you would like to take a picture of. So for example, weather is always a good. Sometimes we've been in such nice weather and look at the, the radar and I want to remember that. So this is a Samsung and it works just like the Apple actually in that you press the power button and the home button at the same time and then let go. Did you see that little blink that went around? Same thing if I now go to my gallery I will see a uh, screen shots album and there is the screenshot I just took and it is a JPEG. Now on the non Samsung Androids, they don't have a physical home button down here. Then you have to use two fingers and do the power button and the down volume button at the same time and let go. And that's how you take a screenshot. Wow. And I, yeah, yeah, screenshots are awesome. I, I love screenshots. And especially for things like we showed that cartoon. Right, right. Okay. Let's see. How do I copy and paste? This is going to be a, a subject of a video that we're going to do later on because of the bandwidth that we have right now. So we'll we'll work on that. 
Actually, we already have a video on copy paste. If people go to our website and tutorial videos and smartphones, you will see a video on how to take how to copy and paste on an Android device. I guess I do need to make one for the uh, iDevices. <laughs> okay. Judy says two apps on the Play Store, movies by Flickster for free and Flickster by Envy Games for 99 cents. Notice the different spellings. So there are different Flicksters out there. It's important to know which is which. Okay. Now let's see, where are we? I need to screen share. I'm on. Whoops. So did you learn something? Uh, so review questions. How do you use the Google Calendar on the iPad, iPhone when there's no Google Calendar app? Yes. And that, and this is a really good thing to know for all apps. If you don't have an app for what you want, there's probably a website for that function. So you just open up a, a browser and go to the website for Google Calendar rather than using an app. Okay, and <clears throat> using the Google Calendar, two or more people can add and edit events to the same calendar, true or false? Absolutely true. You can even have a whole family calendar if you want, as long as you do the share settings correct, and you can just find the instructions on Google. You can share calendars. Okay, how do you start the copy and paste process on a smartphone or tablet? Well, you just, it's a long press. We'll show you that in the tutorial video. And to see all our tutorial videos, become a member, geeksontour.com, and check out the tutorial videos. Okay, or what, what? I should have made that question be how do you take a screenshot? And that's the power and the home button simultaneously and then let go. It's a little tricky, it takes some practice, but it's worth it. All right. So next week we're going to have a beginner's lesson. I'm not sure what Chris is going to do yet, and we'll have an app. I'll have an app of the week. Where am I? <laughs> So we did this week's beginner lesson because of something David asked us. What do you think we should do next week? <laughs> yeah, put that in your comments. And watch for the notification for next week's show. Make sure to click to the notification that you're coming and leave any questions in the comments there. Wow, this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> and so... I don't know. Chris, Jim, David, thanks so much for being here. That was a big help. And uh, we'll see you all next week on What Does This Button Do? And I hope we'll have a better internet connection. So just uh, what does this button do over here? <laughs>